Shot and Spit Stories. Brace yourselves for the impact of the shocking wind-up to this yard. The Neat Job, a crime suspense story. Good Lord, lady. What made you do it? You better tell us about it, Mrs. Burdine. Start from the beginning. Eleanor Burdine's face was a rigid white mask with white staring eyes. She stared, gazed blankly into the shadows of the cellar workshop. The two detectives from Homicide waited in silence for her to start her story. When she began to talk, her voice was unexpressed, a low, dreary monotone. I, I married Arthur three years ago. I don't know why I did it. Perhaps I was afraid of the prospect of being an old maid. In any case, I did it. Never loved him. I just needed a husband. Badly. Happy Eleanor. Yes, Arthur. Very. But where will we live after the honeymoon is over? I was going to surprise you, but I might as well tell you now. I put a posit on a house in Bexley. Oh, Arthur, really? How wonderful. What does it look like? Is it furnished? You'll see it, Eleanor. I'm sure you'll like it. Of course. I'll like it, Arthur. If you bought it for me, dear, I can't wait to see it. I couldn't wait for the honeymoon to be over. Frankly, I was bored stiff. Never having loved Arthur, I found the whole thing quite dull. I looked forward to the pleasure of living in my own house with delightful anticipation. Finally, we arrived. It is. Isn't it attractive? Y y yes, v very nice. I've expected something small and inexpensive since Arthur had not been wealthy, but I have never pictured anything like the house that looked up before me. It was one of those tremendous century-old monstrosities that the very rich of that period had considered quite elegant. It looked hideous. Oh, let's go inside. It's completely furnished. You'll adore it. Yeah, I'll bet. Arthur made a feeble attempt to carry me across the threshold, but it, that didn't exactly succeed. As he stood beside me, breathing hard, I surveyed the horror he dragged me into. The place was furnished all right. In fact, it was over-furnished. Every available inch of space was occupied by some nauseating dust catcher. I love antiques, don't you, Eleanor? Oh. Oh yes, Arthur, they're so, so interesting. The minute I saw the place, I fell in love with it, Eleanor. I want it kept just exactly as it is. Exactly. Oh, I wouldn't change a thing, Arthur. Everything is perfect. I hated the place. When we settled down to a daily routine and Arthur returned to work, I tried rearranging the furniture to make it look a little better. But the night after I did it, have a hard day at the office, dear? No. Bad. Hey, hey, what in the hell? He got as red as a beet. He what blew up. What did you do? Who told you to rearrange the furniture? I thought it might look nicer. You thought? Never mind what you thought. I told you I wanted the house left exactly as it was. I meant it. Now, change it all back again. Yes, Arthur. It's funny how you get to know a man after you're married to him. So, I got to know Arthur. Oh, Lord. Yes. And the more I learned, the more I began to despise him. A place for everything, and everything in its place, Eleanor. Yes, Arthur. He was ridiculous, a fiend for neatness. Every night, he'd come home from work and go through the drawers to see that I hadn't disturbed their precise arrangements. Eleanor, the laundry came back today, didn't it? Yes, Arthur. How many times have I told you my shorts go on the left, folded in half, buttons up? Yes, Arthur. It was maddening. He'd go through the house on a white glove inspection. The top of this door jam is dusty, Eleanor. You have to learn to be less sloppy when you clean. Yes, Arthur. He'd even criticize the way I set the table. This is not the way we fold napkins, dear. You must learn to do it right. Yes, Arthur. It got worse and worse. Look at this table, Eleanor. There's dust on it. You'll have to be neater than that. 
Yes, Arthur. By our first anniversary, he made a nervous wreck out of me. It was about that time that he'd begun building his workshop here in the cellar. What are you doing down here, Arthur? You'll see, dear. He spent a small fortune on the machine tools he installed in the workshop. He bought every gadget available. How do you like it, dear? It looks... Very nice, dear. Yes, and it's going to stay that way, too. Take lessons from the way I keep this place, dear. You'll see what neatness and, and orderliness means. Yes, Arthur. Oh, Lord, he kept that workshop neat. Everything had a specific place where it was kept, stored, or hung. He had shelves of jars, each labeled carefully, where tiny screws, nuts, and other items were sorted and filed. I know where everything is. Everything. That that's neatness, Eleanor. Yes, Arthur. By the end of the second year, I was ready to walk out, chuck everything, and leave. He'd move into the kitchen with his perverted mania for orderliness. Eleanor, you used a can of tomato soup and didn't check it off the list. And you didn't fill in the empty place with one in the front of the back. Uh, uh I forgot, Arthur. You forgot? That's no excuse. You mustn't forget. Don't let it happen again. Yes, Arthur. His idiotic checklist slayed me. He had one for the food which he kept in the pantry. It was an inventory of the canned goods. When I used the can, I was supposed to check it off the list so it could be replaced. Hmm. <laughs> Running low on rhubarb, I see. He kept another one in the bathroom on the inside of the medicine cabinet door. It listed all the drugs and their quantities. Regularly, he'd count the pills in the bottle. Eleanor, you used two aspirin tablets and then checked them all. He even started organizing the way I kept the kitchen used. From now on, pots and pans will be kept in their proper places in the cupboard. No more throwing them haphazardly into the stove. Then he moved into my bedroom, criticizing the way I kept my clothes. Hangers should all hook over the rod from the front, and your clothes should all hang the same way, button side facing left. That's yes. me. Yes, Arthur. He assailed my drawer. Keep your undies to the right, stockings in small boxes, sweaters to the left, blouses in the middle. Yes, Arthur. Then he checked to see if his orders had been carried out. You called me? Sir, Arthur. Honor, you've got a pair of black pumps and a bunk of brown shoes in the shoe rack. Lord, will you ever learn to be neat? Brown shoes on one shelf, black below. Sometimes, sometimes Eleanor, I felt this like... This magazine is upside down in the stand. Titles up, covers out, please. Yes, Arthur. One day, I needed a thumbtack and had searched Arthur's workshop for one. That night... Eleanor, were you down here at my workshop? Yes, Arthur. I need to keep out of here, understand? This is the one place I can keep neat. Don't you come around slopping it up with your messy ways. Do you hear? I forbid you to come down here again. Yes, Arthur. Then, yesterday, a picture come loose from the wall. The nail just held it was so old, it just bent and... What was that? I rushed down to the glacier to have the broken picture glass replaced and returned before Arthur got home. <laughs> I gotta hang it up back again, or he'll have a fit. I went down to the cellar, and I took a hammer. I noted carefully where I'd taken it from, so I could replace it exactly right. He'll be steaming if he, if he finds out. Then I'd taken down one of the hundreds of label jars that lined the shelves, one with nails that looked like the right size. Just one nail. He surely hasn't counted these. I took a nail out of the jar and started to put it back in its proper place on the shelf when... Oh my God! <laughs> the jar shattered into a thousand pieces on the cement floor and the nails lay scattered crazily about. For a moment, I stared at the mess, dumbfounded. Uh -huh. Then I began to cry. <laughs> the tension, the nervousness of violating Arthur's workshop sanctuary was too much for me. Suddenly, upstairs, a door slammed. Eleanor, I'm home. <gasps> Arthur! I listened to him moving through the house. I heard him stop for a moment. Then I heard him shout. Oh, Eleanor, what happened to this picture here? Oh, 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 oh,
could hear him stepping toward the cellar door. He was angry. I could tell. I was frightened. What would happen when he would found me? What would happen when he found me in the broken jar? Eleanor, you down there? Are you in my workshop? Are you what? What's going on in here? Please, Arthur, don't be angry. I was only trying to. He glared at the broken jar and the nails scattered over the workshop floor. His face grew red, his eyes blazed. I told you to keep out of here, didn't I? I wanted to hang the picture back up so you wouldn't be angry. His face was crimson. He raved wildly. You wanted to hang the picture up so you came down here for a nail, eh? Only you broke the jar, eh? Sloppy, sloppy Eleanor broke the jar. I felt everything spinning. My face grew hot. My cheeks burned. Can't you do anything neat? Can't you? Can't you? Can't you do anything neat? I backed away and my hand pulls on something, a handle of one of Arthur's tools. I pulled it from its place as everything went black. Eleanor! Eleanor nodded to the little pile of nails, screws, and odd items that she'd emptied out of the rows of jars. I remember doing that. I remember wanting to show him I could be neat. I remember I wanted it to be a neat job. I cleaned up everything when I was finished. Look for yourselves. I cleaned up the blood every drop. Yeah, lady, you certainly did a neat job. <gasps> Very neat. The detectives from Homicide turned toward the rows of jars that lined the shelves. Each one was in its place, but Arthur's precise, carefully lettered labels had been replaced by new ones in Eleanor's nervous scrawl. They each briefly described the contents of their respective jars.